Good morning to all you Sioux High Earth Science students. Yes, once again, this is Mr. McLeod coming at you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at 5.45 a.m. Welcome to our next podcast on mutations. Today we'll focus on what mutations are, the different kinds of mutations, and how they actually happen during the protein synthesis process. So once again, get your notes out, something to write with, and let's mutate. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, you should recognize a lot of this slide from our previous discussion of protein synthesis. Remember that mRNA gets synthesized, i.e. manufactured, in the nucleus under the direction of DNA, and you see that up here, in this process called transcription. And then polymerase molecules copy the amino acid sequence instructions from DNA and bring it out into the cytoplasm. And remember, this process is called transcription. Then tRNA supervises the translation process of bringing together the sequencing instructions and the actual amino acids located in the cytoplasm to the ribosome where they're bonded together, um, supervised by ribosomal RNA, and eventually become a working protein that you see right here. Now, sickle cell anemia, now you see some red blood cells here. Now red blood cells, we, know, we would describe if I were teaching anatomy and physiology as donuts. Healthy, regular donuts, uh, like your glazed donut. So they're, they're kind of rounded and healthy, big holes in the middle. Um, these clearly are not that shape. Now one's close to it right here. But you can, you can see now that something's happened to these red blood cells. And that, um, what's happened to them is a disease called sickle cell anemia. Now the sickling, and you can see why they call it a sickle, that looks like a sickle right there. Not a popsicle, but a regular sickle. The sickling reduces now <clears throat> the red blood cells ability to carry two substances, oxygen, through <clears throat> hemoglobin and carbon dioxide through carbohemoglobin. I'd like you to write that down. So the function of red blood cells is to carry oxygenated blood via hemoglobin um, to the parts of the body and then returns now uh, with the carbon dioxide to the lungs via carbohemoglobin to be expelled out of the body as a waste product. So make sure you get that in your notes before we get started. Now also recall that genes are regions of DNA located on a chromosome, much like sections of Tootsie Roll and that Tootsie Roll log we talk about. Now these genes contain all the information. You see now the word gene up here. The genes now contain all the information for the sequencing of amino acids that eventually result in the many different proteins living organisms require. Now, also recall that this sequencing is really the order of nitrogen bases. And you see the, the nitrogen bases here, A, T, C, and G. You know what those mean? So they're really the order of nitrogen bases located on each nucleotide in that amino acid chain. Now write in your notes that it's these proteins that actually create the traits or characteristics like the eye and hair color you barely see down here. You see, you probably, can you see her eyes? You probably can't see her eyes, you can see the top of it. But you certainly can see um, traits like hair color and skin color and here's her eyebrow shape. Those are all controlled by proteins that, be, that are a uh, result of genes and those proteins now create the traits. So make sure you get that in your notes. Okay, so again, we see here the transcription process that we studied earlier. We see messenger RNA copying DNA and bringing it to the cytoplasm. So here's our cytoplasm right here. 
So you now see the copying messenger RNA, copying DNA and bringing it out into the cytoplasm. Um, and then the tRNAs, you recognize those, those things with the three loops on them, now bringing amino acids to the ribosome to be processed. Now you see this whole ribosome here. Here's our messenger RNA. Here's our tRNAs bringing in the amino acids. And here's now our primary structure of, of a protein right here. So again, the, the point I want to make here is that that protein, this protein right here, will ultimately become some kind of a trait. All right, and that trait now will have a function of some kind. So again, it's important for you to understand that proteins, man, extremely important. I mean, like maybe the most important thing in your body besides your brain, which is made of protein. So I would still make it very important. Let's move on. Okay, so what is a mutation anyway? Now, let's write down now the following flowchart. Now, you're not going to see it here, but I want you to make a flowchart out of these three things that I'm going to talk to you about. You see now the traits there that result in, uh, so here's our genotypes down here, and here's our phenotypes uh, down here. There, you can see the genotypes a little bit better now. So we're going to write a flowchart out of three things that I'm going to tell you right now. All right, so the first, mutations are changes in DNA sequences which result in changes to the order of A, T, C, and G. So write that down first, then an arrow, all right, a right-handed arrow, and then we'll go to the next step in this flowchart. Step two. Those changes that we just talked about then produce a different order which results in a different amino acid in the protein. So if we change the order of ATGC, we then change the amino acid which changes the protein. So there's number two. Now write another right-handed arrow and let's add the third part of this little flowchart. The result is a completely different protein structure and remember, if we change the structure, what do we change? You gotta be nodding your head going, the function, right. So if we have a completely different protein structure, this results in a change in the function of that protein, and that can cause some problems. Okay, so those three things, make sure you have that flow chart. That will help you in understanding uh, what's coming next. All right. Now let's take a look at the different types of mutations that can occur in the protein processing sequence. Write in your notes that the first class of mutations are called point mutations, and you see them right here. Point mutations. Also write that point mutations occur when a single base has changed for some reason. When a single base, and you know what we mean by bases, when a single base has changed for some reason. Now let's get three examples in your notes. All right, first, silent mutations, and you see silent mutations here. Silent mutations are where a change occurs, but no change occurs in the amino acid. So some change in the base sequence occurs. So here you see a U instead of a C. However, it does not change the amino acid at all. If it doesn't change the amino acid, then it's not going to change the protein or the protein function. Therefore, it's referred to as a silent mutation. So make sure you get that in your notes. So it's a change in the sequence and no real effect. Uh, no, it doesn't have really any effect. All right. Now, Next are missense, missense mutations. In a missense, a base pair substitution, here you see a base pair substitution mistake happens and results in a change in the actual amino acid. That then results in a change in the protein. 
And then the last is called a nonsense mutation. In a nonsense mutation, an amino acid is changed to a stop code and interferes in the processing of that protein. So missets have a change in amino acid, which means it changes the protein and the protein function. A nonsense point mutation is where it changes the amino acid sequence to a stop code. So it changes it to a stop code, and that stops the production of that protein. So make sure you get those three types in your notes. Okay, here's a great picture now of a sickled cell, a sickled red blood cell, and some really, they look like jelly donut type things, some jelly donut healthy red blood cells. So write in your notes that it's a point mutation that ultimately leads to the development of a sickle cell anemia situation. If we take a look at the slide, we can see the original wild type gene. This is the, the normal or wild type gene right here. We're going to go down this way. Okay? We can see the wild type gene for hemoglobin. Now, you'll need to put this explanation in your notes that I'm going to give you somehow. I'm going to explain it and then you're going to have to get that explanation in your notes. So listen for the explanation, then write it in your own words. So we can see the original coding for the amino acid glutamine as CTT right here. Here's the, the wild type or the normal now situation for glutamine. Now, CTT results in an mRNA sequence of GAA and you know, understand why. So this would result in a normal hemoglobin of glutamine right here. So we'd have a functioning jelly donut on this side. Now, if we look on the right hand side, we could see a random missense base pair substitution. Now, billions and billions and billions of, of copies of our DNA are made by messenger RNA, there are bound to be mistakes. So there's no real reason that scientists can figure out why these mutations happen. They just happen. So in this situation, instead of a T, the polymerase puts in an A. So that A, instead of CTT, results in CAT. Now, then that results in an mRNA sequence of GUA instead of GAA. So this missense or random substitution now results in a brand new amino acid valine instead of glutamine. Now obviously the function now of this hemoglobin molecule gets affected. So instead of being a normal jelly donut this results now in a completely different structured cell that we call a sickle cell. And this sickle cell then um, doesn't function normally. So, so you can see now how a single missense mutation can result in a completely different functioning cell. Obviously then the hemoglobin protein doesn't function the way it's supposed to. So you got to find a way to get that explanation in your notes. It may require you to draw it here, and that would be fine. Um, this may help you now on a future question about uh, protein synthesis and mutations. So if you want to take a second and draw this, it might not be a bad idea. Okay, now just a brief word about the actual disease sickle cell anemia. Write in your notes that sickle cell anemia happens primarily in Africans and in particular strikes one out of every 400 African Americans. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but that's fairly frequent in terms of um, the millions of them that, that live in the United States. Also write in your notes that it's a recessive inheritance pattern. Now what that means then is both parents would have to carry the gene 
All right, so if both parents carry the gene, that's the only way they could donate it to their offspring, and their offspring would have sickle cell anemia. So make sure you get that in your notes. Okay, that concludes part one of our, our talk about mutations. So take a picture of these notes, submit them to Moodle, go grab that study guide, answer the questions, and then I'll see you in part two. Bye.